pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for blessing us with a beautiful Wednesday to come in your house. I pray, dear God, you open our hearts, you open our minds. You just worship with us in such a grand and glorious way, dear Lord, that we fall in love with you all over again. And as we leave here this evening, dear God, we're just so inspired and all filled to have been in your presence that somebody else, dear Lord, can meet Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ms. Christian.
on your prayer list. I'd like to call the names of those individuals on our prayer list. Um, I have several updates that I'll give you as we go down the list. As I call off the name of the individual, if you're the person responsible for having them on the prayer list, if you don't mind, please give us the update. Uh, if you don't have an update, if you just let me know to leave them on the prayer list, I'll move on to the next name. <clears throat> Brian Baggett. This is, this is one that I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, Brian's having a rough time. Uh, he said... Some days are better than others, but the doctors have reassured him, basically, it's going to get worse. So, uh, Brian has been a staple at, at, as a pastor uh, here in Linden for 30 years. Uh, he's been a faithful member uh, of that church, Pinecrest, and he's been serving God well. Uh, it's going to be a great loss to our community. When he can no longer continue, and Brian seems to be moving towards the point of accepting the fact that uh, his end is near. I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you know, you need to call Brian tonight and tell him you love him or anything like that. But if you would, please continue to lift him up in your prayers, lift his family up in his prayers, and just realize what a great loss this is going to be of a man of God in our community. Uh, so uh, I just continue to ask for your prayers for Brother Brian. Pat Ball. Courtney and Liam. Uh, they're good. I mean, keep them on the okay. list until we have any updates. Sure. Freddie Berry, Miss Sandra. Have we have we been taken off? He's doing real good. Okay. Dawn Blevins. Yes, ma'am. Blake Biddy. Tim Brandon and Gay. So hey, like, Tim. So, like, here's the deal. I met with the uh, cancer doctor today, and it's definitely lung cancer. It's the bladder cancer is somehow worked in my lungs, even though they thought they had it all. So in two weeks, I start chemo, and I'll do a few months of chemo. One time, one day a week, and uh, after that, we'll go on an immunotherapy type drug. They tell me that I'm not going to lose all my hair and all that kind of stuff. So we just see. Uh, I don't know what kind of sick days there's going to be with it. They claim not. Here, y'all keep me in I'd like to do a little better than that. So, Brother Tim is sharing with us where he's at physically, uh, not spiritually or emotionally, but physically. Um, so, one day a week for the next two months, you're going to be driving back and forth between here and Shreveport? Yeah. Uh, here's the deal, y'all. If I truly believe that my life's in God's hands, I don't know if I got tomorrow. I got, I got to stick on what the book says. Yes, sir. So, but they're talking years. I don't know if Jesus is. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, doctors have been wrong before, Brother Tim, so I, I, I hope that you got much longer than that. But uh, if, you, if you can bear to put up with Brother Tim for one day a week, uh, we're looking for some volunteers to ride along with Brother Tim or drive Brother Tim to his chemotherapy once a month. Okay. All right, Brother Ron, Ron's going to go I'll once. Go. All right, so I, Kurt. I think we're going to be. Oh, no, you're not getting out of this. No, 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 no. no. I'll bring you a guitar and play for you. I'll bring you a song. That'd be fun. You can tell me off the stick. So if you have the ability to, to volunteer to drive Brother Tim crazy one day a week, once a month, I'll have a list prepared in my office. You guys just let me know, and then we'll make sure Brother Tim um, doesn't have the truck keys that day. Seriously, it's going to be an all day thing on the day. It will be. By the time I got to say I got to do lab. And then they'll look at my blood every time and they'll decide how to do the exact mix of the chemo drug. Okay. And so then you gotta wait for all that to happen before they can actually do it. Which do you still have to have a coronavirus test? Huh? You still have to have a coronavirus test? I'm still up to 11. I don't know what's gonna happen on the test. Okay. I do know this stuff is gonna be pretty hard on my immune system. Even though I'm strong, I may have to go ahead and give in and take it. I don't know. Okay. That's still yet to be seen. All right. Thank you very much, brother. Miss Gay, like you have the ability to call on us when he's driving you nuts. You do. Uh, so just take that opportunity. All right. I'm a big I'm a perfect example. So, ladies. I didn't say what. I just said I'm a perfect example. 
So I, I'm, I'm going to get all the ladies to say amen at one time in this particular instance. So, ladies, when men are sick, we're the biggest babies, right? Amen. No. No? no not you wasn't. Okay. So, when, when we get like that, I know that we can be hard to get along with, and I know we can be hard to put up with. So, you guys think about poor Miss Gay having to put up with Brother Tim now, okay? So, if you want to take her out for a cup of coffee or for an ice cream or something, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tag out with you, Miss Gay, okay? All right. Brother Tim, it's going to be all right. Okay. He does. Jamie Childers. Melvin Coates. Salvation, please continue to pray for Holly until we get some different results. Micah Gunnels, I have an update from Miss Brittany on, on poor Michael. Okay, so this is the update for Michael. The doctor wants us to come in tomorrow on Noah's seventh birthday. I have asked that they admit us tonight uh, and release us early in the morning so I can spend the day with Noah. We're waiting on an answer for that. Please pray that this would be a symptom-free ordeal. He's never had platelets. <clears throat> His blood count was down to one. I don't know what his normal blood count's supposed to be, but I don't think it's supposed to be one. So he was going to have to have a transfusion and, and they wanted him to come in on the 7th. And she's asking if they can do it earlier than that. <laughs> So that's the update on uh, Michael. Rick Guerrero, Brother Kurt. Um, you keep in mind, you keep going through it because this, this is a lot of. You're uh, supposed to be going seeing another doctor. Has he been there yeah, yet? Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't been there yet. Okay. Um, but they're supposed to make some appointments or something like that. Okay. Beth Hall, CL. All right, thank you, sir. Eric Harris, continue to pray. Hayes, Brittany Hill, and Jacob. Anybody spoken to Brittany or Jacob? We, we were at the house today in good spirits. Um, he wasn't super active, we didn't get any updates, but he was mobile and walking around the yard while we were digging in the mud. So. Okay. This is the update that Brother Jacob gave me today. They've narrowed it down to seizures, complex migraines, nerve damage, or something autoimmune. Things have gotten better some, but I'm having more neck pain. I have a few good hours in a day, most days, so there is some improvement. New meds started to cover the nerve pain and the migraines, so he's praying that that works. So the prayer is that new medication will take care of his issues. Yeah. <clears throat> and now uh, they are taking visitors if anybody wants to stop by the house. They enjoy that, so thank you, sir. Claudia Hilton. Yes, ma'am. Sam Holder. Continue to pray. Nicole Jacobs' father has passed away, so we're just praying for Nicole and the passing of her father. She has some uh, some stressful issues over that. Uh, Dr. Josh Kessler, Miss Linda.
Yes, ma'am. Emmanuel Quab and I reached out to Emmanuel the day he did not respond. Kim Littlejohn. Hey, Miss Kim. Hello. How you doing for life issues? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ray Littlejohn. Brother Robert, how's your brother doing? Yes, sir. Bob McCauley for Unspoken. Brother Bob, how you doing? Yes, sir. Thank you. You got it. Miss Mildred McDuffie, has anybody spoken to Miss Mildred this week? I did not, so okay. Yvonne Merrill, the Otten family. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Jerrica Poole, SOS ladies, mailed her a beautiful card, so we're reaching out to Jerrica. Please continue to lift her up in prayer. Kylie Quattlebaum, Sean Quinn, Buzz Roundtree. Blake Sampson and Madison Bell. Uh, he's actually improving every day. Uh, they're taking him off of the ventilator more. Good. He's more respon- his eyes are more responsive to, um, to his mother's voice, to toys, to music. So That's they're not so everywhere. So the prayers are definitely working. Very he's good. Better. Thank you. Claire Shelton. she would be going to Shreveport. I'll be carrying her to Shreveport tomorrow. <laughs> okay. She tried to get us around it where she wouldn't go, but the nurse called and started twisting her arm on the phone. So okay. She's got to go. So you will not be here for the men's Bible study in the morning, but you're going to be with your wife. I won't be there. Okay. Dale Shelton Jr. has passed away. We're going to pray for the family. He was a veteran. They buried him in the veterans' uh, cemetery uh, right out of the street. Yes, sir. Annette Sherman. The Smith family and Baby Cope. Uh, there was some good news for the Smith family and Baby Cope. The baby did not have to have the stent at the base of his spine for the uh, uh, oh that fluid. Um, yeah, I was trying to think of the other word for it, but it's okay. Uh, sure, we'll call it that too. So they are going to try and start bottle feeding him. So things are going well for baby Cope. Uh, so what that really means is uh, Danny's life is going to get really complicated because they had moved that house behind their house in order for uh, them for, <coughs> for yeah for his daughter and his grandson to live into, and he's got to rehab that whole thing before they're even able to move into it. So uh, do pray for the Smith family and continue to pray for baby Cope. It is looking better. Catherine Snellgrove. I'm just driving my mom crazy, so I don't know how to It's good. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Tina Sutton. Okay. Yeah, she is. <clears throat> Matthew and Summer Tabler. Uh, they, they continue to struggle with life in Alaska. Uh, Matthew still has his military deployment that he's going to have to fulfill while he's there. Um, Summer is going to be coming home back to this area. Uh, she may be flying into Dallas as early as tomorrow. So they're going through some life changes. That means that she's going to be away from her husband. That means that she's going to have her and her small child are going to be here with her family, but just not her spouse. So uh, if you've ever been apart from your spouse and, and, and you love that particular person, that's hard. If you have a small child and you're forced to be away from the small child because the military says you have to be in some place where it's cold and unhospitable, then, then that's very hard. Please continue to pray for Matthew and Summer. Summer, uh, they're, they are having a rough time. Michael and Jesse Taylor. Buddy Teague. Uh, he's doing good. The last lady's all a little bit longer. 
Yes, ma'am. Kathy Walker? so he does more so then he, he falls because he was pushing himself harder than he should have. So we continue to pray for Brother Don that he would continue to heal and strengthen. This fleet of witness on the prayer list for salvation, we continue to pray for her until we hear some positive news. Uh, before I ask for anyone to be added to the prayer list, so we're going to go down to our nursing home, hospice, homebound residents and patients. A Linden Healthcare is Ms. Dolores Smith. She is back in her room. Brother Danny said that she's doing well, so she's over the infection uh, that had her in the hospital. Don Hill, Linda Barlow, Vivian Herod, Magnolia Place is Doris Haynes. At Golden Villa is Ruby Francis. At Wesley House is Ruth Dupree. And at Edgewood Manor is Miss Lois Hill. Uh, now, does anyone have anything we need to add to the prayer list? If you mind raising your hands. Miss Lovey, I'm going to start with you in the back. Okay, so I went and I saw Angie Boykin. And um, she's doing good for that. But her dementia is setting in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a great visit. But she asked to let everybody know that she's selling her house and she wants somebody that would love her house as much as she did to buy her house. So, but she's only got two or three weeks left before she moves to Gail's house. Yes, a house next to Gail. Right. All right, so Miss Angie Boykin is going to be leaving us. Uh, if you have an opportunity to go by and visit with her, she, she has better days and she has worse days. On her great days, you don't think anything's wrong with her. On her bad days, you have the same conversation over and over and over. And she, she's, she's having the same conversation, just like it's brand new each time. So we can continue to pray for Miss Angie. We can go by and visit her. Uh, Brother Sam, you had your hand up? Yeah. Um, my Aunt Pat that lives across the tracks from you over there, uh, she passed away at 2 o'clock in the morning this morning. And, uh, she was a heavy smoker. She got in the hospital. She had been off on a bed, doing fine, and she had some tightness in her chest, and they decided it was pneumonia a week and a half later. She was dead. Okay. Was one of her lungs collapsed. They couldn't ever get it back up again. So, yeah. What was Aunt Pat's last name? Bowling. B-O-L-I-N. And that was my dad's baby sister. Out of seven kids, there was my dad and two more left. And that's it. Okay. So we're going to pray for the Bowling family because Mr. Pat has passed away. Uh, Ms. Kayla? Uh, I'm going to add for Courtney and myself. Uh, Courtney has a cousin named Courtney. Okay. And her boyfriend, Carson, just had a baby, Carter Lee. And um, the baby came early. She was only 29 weeks. Uh, he weighs 2.9 pounds. And he's 14 inches long. Uh, they're both doing good right now, but it was emergency C-section. And... Um, uh, her sister also had an attendant. Yeah, the, hey, yeah, exactly. The same day that she had her baby. So, okay. um, Courtney, Carter, and I mean, Courtney, Carson, and Carter Lee for uh, the baby and the family, pretty much. Pretty yes, ma'am. Um, and then we had <coughs> our friend Dot Eaton had uh, hip replacement surgery today. Uh, it went well. But she's in recovery now, so I just want to pray for her recovery. So that's not eaten? Mm -hmm. Okay, she had hip replacement. Yes. And that's it. Okay. Brother Danny, you had your hand up, sir? Yes, I'd, I'd like to have prayer for my uh, Sun School class. It's been a long time with a lot of there. But we sure would like to get started. I invited six kids back to my room today to know where they would be going and if they're coming. I had one tell me she'd be there um, Sunday if she had to wake up her parents. Is that Lanaya? No, that's no. that. Okay. That's that. All right. <laughs> so we're going to be here Sunday.
Sunday for Sunday school, guys. <laughs> Yay! It's coming back. So, I'm sorry? They're double A batteries. We were going to get some more, but I don't know what we did yet, but it's okay. I can be loud. I better look over here again. I got to see No, it's all right. church list, uh, uh, on Blackview Church both on your prayer list, we're going to go through our church ministries. Operation Christmas Child is a year-long outreach. Today is the end of the month. This month was Hot Wheels. Next month is going to be what, Kayla? We're doing school supplies for Africa with on sale the first few weeks. Okay. So every week, pretty much, we're going to do different school supplies. So here's the thing. Like, every time you go into Walmart or the dollar store, if you see some school supplies, whatever the sale is, if you pick up one of those extra and you can bring that here. We can send it to some poor child around the world, and we can use that as a way to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Not liquid glue. I'm sorry? Not liquid glue. And what else must they be? What she else? said not liquid glue, and what else can we not send? Can we send them sharp scissors? No. Okay. She said yes. <laughs> you know what I'm buying. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay. So... We, we do not need pencils. Or toothbrushes. Tons, Tons of pencils. Okay. And we need notepads. Notebooks. Yes. We need spiral. Spiral bound notebooks. Yes. And crayons. Okay. I'll look when I go to Walmart. What kind of brushes did you say not get? No toothbrushes. We're good on toothbrushes and pencils. <laughs> right. So we have pencils and we have toothbrushes. We need spiral bound notebooks. Preferably um, single notebooks, not three subject notebooks. Because we want them to fold and fit in the box. We do. We don't want that to be the only thing the poor child gets. So, uh, hmm? Get a bigger box. Get a bigger box. Okay, we'll work on that too. Underneath Operation Christmas Child, I ask for prayers for me because I need them. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Underneath that, we have our youth for their salvation, for their faithfulness, for Brother Virgil and for Brother Aaron. They're back there with their youth right now trying to teach them something about Jesus. So please continue to lift them up in your prayers. It is an important ministry, and we need to make sure that we are honoring those blessings as well. For our deacons, Brother Jerry, Brother Tommy, Brother Jimmy, Brother Tim, and Brother Danny, they have the hard work of, of seeing to it that, that we stay on track with the will of God. So please continue to lift them up in your prayers and, and make sure 
that they are covered so the devil can't attack them or their families because we want to make sure that this church stays singularly focused on the will of God. For our band ministry, it says Lovey and Mandy, but it's really Rocky and who? Rocky. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say. It's kind of Rocky and Brother Tim because Brother Tim opened his mouth. <laughs> Tim, we're going to need you here on Sunday morning early so we can run the van. Okay, so you're going to correct that next week, right? I'm not making that promise. I should correct that next week is how I will say that. <laughs> uh, underneath our van ministry, we have our Sunday school. This is this is really like this year, God has really placed this on my heart extensively. He really has. And, and I'm going to be praying and I'm going to be shaking the trees and I'm going to be visiting the schools. I'm going to the school board meetings. I'm talking to the teachers. I'm asking the teachers, who is your worst student? If you would just let me have at them for five minutes, I want to talk to them about Jesus. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying that God opens up doors for us, and, and he does. He always opens those doors. And then we have to deal with whatever happens after that, and it is work. So uh, we're praying for God to bless us with kids. I believe God's going to bless us with kids. So uh, we need to be ready. For our Sunday worship service and for Vacation Bible School, um, Kylie Butler is here tonight. You want to have a meeting tonight to discuss Vacation Bible School? Can. She said we can. <laughs> I'm officially here, so it's she, She's officially here, so she's finished her job, and she's now going to be here until she starts teaching in Atlanta uh, sometime in August. July 28th. Somewhere around there. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. Did you say? We do have a meeting tonight. Nominating committee, okay. All right. Here's the thing. Kylie, stand up for me again. If you have any interest in helping out with the kids that God's going to bless us with, please see Kylie. Very good. Thank you. And then there's a nominating committee to meeting tonight as soon as I'm done, and it's going to be a long time. Audiovisual ministry. Uh, we're working on improving our audiovisual ministry continuously, so please continue to lift that up in prayers. Uh, we have spent a lot of money to have uh, an excellent audiovisual ministry here, and we have some things that we can use that we have not been using, so I'm trying to put them into practice as well. For our music director and our choir, uh, we are going to have a choir interest meeting when? On the 18th of July. All right, so if, you're, if you have any interest in joining the choir on the 18th of July, we're going to have service at 2 p.m. that day because it's going to be a special service. We'll tell you all about it next week at the business meeting. If you have any interest in joining the choir or singing in the choir or, or trying out for the choir, it's, it's hard to get in the choir. You really have to have talent. Uh, be here on the 18th. 18th of July. SOS, tomorrow morning. Who's doing the ministry? Ms. Martha? Ms. Harris. Ms. Harris. Harris. Karen. 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 <coughs> I was like, I don't know who that one is. I'm sorry. Okay, I know Karen. Congratulations, Karen. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Men's Bible study. Um, Connor was actually scheduled to lead the men's Bible study tomorrow, but he has to go to Texarkana, so Brother Jared has agreed to fill in. So Brother Jared will be leading the men's Bible study in the morning at 10 o'clock. If you are a man and want to come in and make fun of Brother Jared, be here at 10 o'clock. Uh, Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm told you don't have any plans tomorrow morning at 10. So, uh, you want Jerry to pick you up? <laughs> That's the Tim right there. You're like the Tim right there. Both Tims are pointing at each other, going, not me, it's you. All right. Brother Danny, at 10 o'clock in the morning, Brother Jared's going to be leading Bible study, and you're invited. You're invited. You. Quinn and Rocky, you guys better be at work, I'm just saying. <laughs> Brandon, however. <laughs> she did just get here today, so. Yeah, and she can come to SOS. Miss Karen's going to be leading a wonderful study for them as well. Yeah. There we go. All right, I'm glad we can handle that. For our building project, please continue to pray that we stay unified in building the greater glory of God at New Colony Baptist Church. For our children's church, we're trying to do some things to um, see to it that children are learning and they're being receptive to it. So I'm, I'm pleased. Please continue to pray for them. For our security team, we have been blessed. We've had no incidents or accidents on our security team, so please continue those prayers. We don't want any incidents or accidents. Amen. Missions with Mandy and Monica. They're back there tonight teaching the children in this community something about Jesus. That is a blessing. For our government, please pray. I don't have time to list all the things they need prayer for, but um, if you could please pray that our government would continue, or no, our government would honor the word and will of God. That's a good prayer. Amen. Persecuted Christians around the world. Christian persecution really ticked up last week in Somalia. There were some crazy things going on. Uh, I, I didn't share it with you from the pulpit on Sunday morning because I didn't feel it was appropriate. But Christian persecution is one of those things that, whew, 
these poor people escaped from Somalia from being in jail, went to a neighboring country, and then they followed them into the country, killed a bunch of them, captured a bunch of them, and then brought them back to put them back in jail. So uh, there's potential possibilities for outbreaks of war because there was an invasion. Technically, the Somali military moved into a neighboring country just so we could capture Christians, and, and really and truly they're guilty of being Christians. So Christian persecution is real. It happens every day. We're blessed in America not to see it on the grand scale that they're suffering with it in different parts of the world. But I don't want to see that here in America. That's why we want to pray for our government and continue to honor the word of God. For our police and for our military, uh, there's lots of stuff going on there, and they can use the coverings of God. So please lift those people up. Um, confession. Does anybody any like to quickly confess? Because I don't have a whole lot of time. Kayla. I don't know how I how much the devil was going to play with our family this week, so I was not as understanding as I should have been. Okay. I'm sorry I should have reminded you, because I remember I told you that first week when you were baptized, the devil really going to get you, and you guys had three kids who were baptized on Sunday morning, so the devil was really going to get you. <laughs> so, uh, in that particular instance, if you need help, we're here to help, so don't, don't think you have to handle that all by yourself. Like, you can call and say, hey, you know what, I need a break. And I love the babysit. I do. Uh, so, uh, I'll keep that in mind, Bob. Okay. <laughs> don't right. ask if you don't wish for <laughs> Jill just said, don't call her. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything for confession this week? Miss Kim? Yeah, you know. I used harsh words on Monday. <laughs> okay. She just used harsh words on Monday. She told me the whole story yesterday, so I do know. And, and, and thank you very much. Anybody else have anything for confession this week? Okay, I got to give one of my own. And I hate to do this because I really want to get to the sermon, but this is going to be. I'm going to limit it to three minutes. <laughs> not the sermon. Not the sermon. <laughs> Thank you. Brother Kirk, go. All right, so in this particular instance, like, I spend a lot of my time still uh, mm, trying to spiritually guide people who generally are unhappy with portions of church life. And, 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 and when someone comes to you and they have a complaint or they have a problem, like I love to be able to give them my undivided attention. But I have, for the last year, been doing way too much music ministry. Way too much. So I, I want to take this time to let you guys know that Krista is our music director. If you have a problem with the music ministry in any context, feel free to go and speak to Krista in a nice, Christian, loving way. If you can't verbalize it in a nice, Christian, loving way, feel free to call somebody else but not me. <laughs> I, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of at my wit's end. I realized last week how much time I was investing in music wars, and it really distracts me from what God has called me to do here. God has called Krista to be our music director. If you have any problems with the music ministry, she is opening to listen. She's open to listening. We have gone out. We have had dinner. We've had people come over. We've had conversations. We've invested a lot of time to see through that we don't have a church split. We don't have any business getting mad at each other over which type of music we play or which type of music we don't play. So my confession this week is I've had enough. I just had. Uh, and, I, and I'll tell you, like somebody... One of the questions we had about music ministry is if we play a video off of YouTube, do we have the licensing rights to play that? And the short answer is no, we don't pay for a license to play music off of YouTube. We don't have that as a license here at the church. They don't even really offer that as a license. So what you have to do is you have to contact each individual musician and you have to pay for the rights or you have to get permission from that musician in order to have the rights. So someone had sent me a song that Casting Crowns did, so I reached out to Casting Crowns and after several emails and several phone calls, the next time I called, they answered the phone. Amen. So someone said earlier, I made friends with Casting Crown last week. I did. <laughs> so in, in, in that particular instance, I was on the phone with them, and they, they, they heard my heart. I explained what was happening here at the church. I really reached out. I wanted to make sure that if we're doing something, that we do it legally, because we're supposed to honor God in all of it. We're supposed to be above reproach. And if we need to pay a licensing fee, we will pay a licensing fee. Well, I'm on the phone with Casting Crowns, and the lady, Christy, I forget her last name now, she said, well, she said, Claude, what is it exactly you want to do? And I said, I just want to play it on the screen for the church. And she says, okay, you're licensed. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 
So we have a license to play Casting Crowns music here on the church screens. So now nobody else has to ask me, do we have a license to play Casting Crowns music? Because we do. She actually gave it to me. It's my name, and she gave me like five numbers behind it. So we have a license to play Casting Crowns here at New Colony Baptist Church. And they were excited that I was even asking permission because they thought we would just take it off YouTube and play it. So, I went over my three minutes, didn't I, Brother Curry? We're going to get to the sermon, Will. I just want you guys to know that it is, it is Krista's heart to do what is right. It is my heart to do what is right. When you guys approach us bickering about something that is really irrelevant to your eternal salvation, it makes you seem childish and we're grown and mature, I just want us to act like it. Okay, now I'm done. That's hard. For now. <laughs> that was my confession. Does anybody have anything for praise this week? Miss Krista. This is praise and thanksgiving. So, the reason I was running late today, I bought a car. Woo! Woo! This is the written word of God that is penned 
by men chosen of God to deliver the word of God to men of God, of which we consider ourselves to be one. So in this particular instance, Matthew chapter 6, this is the Holy Spirit. This is God himself delivering a message to his chosen people. And this is what he says. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Come. Do not worry about your life. The question was, why worry? The scripture says, I say to you, do not worry. I want you guys to understand, this is not Matthew making a suggestion. This is God telling you not to do it. What you will eat or what you will drink. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. Think about those three things. If you eliminated the concern that you have for those three things on a daily basis, how much more free would you be to share the word of God with somebody else? Because you're not worried about what you are going to be happening, what's happening to you in your life, or what you're going to have for lunch, or what you're going to have for dinner. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. That's the message from God. That's not me. I didn't write that. I love it. I do. I've used it before. I'm not going to say on who. Matthew chapter 6, continuing in verse 25. Nor about your body what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? The answer to that question is yes, it is. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. The question was why worry? The word of God tells us you should not. It doesn't say that you can worry in this incident. It doesn't say that you can worry in that incident. So I want you guys to understand this. If God tells you not to worry and you find yourself consumed with worry, that is not a special gift given to you of God. It's not. Worry comes from the devil. Amen. Put him in his place Amen. and go on with your day. God has better things in store for you than stress. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for neither, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? This is the word of God asking you, what do you think of your value? Do you value yourself less than the birds that you see in the McDonald's parking lot picking up french fries? And the answer is, some of you do. Some of you think, oh, woe is me. I'm in this all by myself. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm just going to go home and just die. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. They're not concerned about tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. They're busy taking care of the moment. And the scriptures, the Bible asks us, don't you think more of yourself than that? Point number one for tonight's message. Jesus answered that question and said, you're worth dying for. Yeah. Jesus answers the question from Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, for you. Are you not worth more than that? Jesus said, yes. And he went to the cross and he died for each of us. That's you and me. Jesus says you're worth more than worry. God tells you do not worry. And yet in the modern world, prescriptions for antidepressants are at an all-time record high. In the country that is the strongest, richest country in the history of the world, we have more blessings than any other country in the history of the world. And all we do is sit around and worry about whether or not we're going to lose them. You can't lose salvation. You don't have to worry. Yes. God said not to. Yes. Stop doing it. Stop. Now, some of you are already saying, Brother Claude, it's hard. I know that we have developed a lifetime habit of allowing stress into our lives. I'm asking you to give that over to Jesus and trust in his power and his strength. I'm not asking you to do it by yourself. If you are so consumed with worry that you, you are bogged down in that particular instance, if you are so consumed with worry, I want you to remember that Scripture tells us that fear is not from God. 
Worry is something God commands us not to do. As Christians, let's adhere ourselves to the word of God and live an example so the rest of the world can get off their medication and find some Jesus. Medication ain't fixing the problem, ladies and gentlemen. A death, a burial, and a resurrection took care of the problem 2,000 years ago. We're just supposed to start acting like it. Verse 27. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? I love this. Like you think of a cubit and you don't think much, right? A cubit's 18 inches. Who in here ever wanted to be taller? Not you, Jared. Keep your hand down. <laughs> Kayla, I'm with you. I always wanted to be six feet tall. My brother's like six foot three. I got to look up at my younger brother. It's embarrassing. I'm <laughs> six foot tall. Kenny. Sit next to Jared next week, okay? <laughs> okay, you got it. <clears throat> we cannot do anything about that. Scripture makes fun of us and asks the question, who in here can worry so much you can grow another 18 inches? A long cubit's 21 inches. I'm sorry. You can't, no. You don't do anything positive sitting there worrying, and Scripture's actually making fun of us for doing it, and we read through this passage and go, oh, they're talking to somebody else. No, they're talking to us. Like the church has to set the example for the rest of the world so the rest of the world can figure it out. Because remember, they're lost. By the very nature of being lost, they don't realize it. They're just lost. Men, if you've ever been somewhere and you thought you knew where you were going and your wife said you should have turned there and you refused to look at the map and you ended up lost anyway, Kylie's looking at Brandon like, uh-huh. <laughs> I've never been lost. Never been lost in my life. Brandon's never been lost. Okay. Next week you can repent. It's okay. It's okay. I'll let it go. If you've ever been lost, your intention was not to get lost. Your intention was to go someplace. At some point in the process, you had to realize you were lost in order so that you could actually get back on track and be found. The rest of the world is looking at the church so that they will know that they are lost. If we're looking as lost as they are, we can't help them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can look out in the world right now, we can all agree on this. They need help. Amen? Amen. Let's do our jobs. Let's stop worrying. Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Verse 29. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon, who is scripturally referred to as the wisest man ever, was not as pleasantly arrayed as a lily of the field, according to scripture. So why do we get so consumed with the details and somehow miss out on the message? And I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I would like for it to stop. Verse 30. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is here and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And there's a question mark there. Like, I wanted it to be an exclamation point. I wanted to say, O oh, you of little faith. Woohoo! So, okay, Chris just got an exclamation point. I'm going to read out of your version next time. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that, that's a perfect example right there. All right, so thank you guys very much. Yes, so in this particular instance, I want you to understand here that what he's doing is he's calling attention to your individual faith. Point number two. I'll spend some time here. No, the point's still there. In order to see faith, it must be displayed. If you say you have faith and don't exercise faith, you're probably mistaken. I don't want to call you a liar. Scripture does. I don't want to. <laughs> if you say that you have faith and you never show anybody your faith, you're lying to somebody. It might be yourself. Faith is something, ladies and gentlemen, we have to live out because the rest of the world needs to see it so they can emulate it. That's how we learn everything in this lifetime. 
We learn how to walk by somebody showing us, holding our hands, helping us along the way. We learn how to talk by having conversations and saying words and making mistakes and getting better at them. Our, our spiritual faith is really no different. We must exercise our spiritual faith or it does not grow. It's really important for our spiritual faith to grow because the rest of the world needs some faith. Verse 31. Still got four minutes, I might make it. Therefore, we do not worry. Therefore, I'm sorry, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Verse 32. For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Gentiles in this particular reference is talking about those that are lost, ladies and gentlemen. Those who do not know Christ as their personal Savior. Yes, at some point you would consider us Gentiles because we're not Jewish. But we're saved, ladies and gentlemen. So we're brothers and sisters with those individuals who God created heaven for. So we are no longer lost. And in this particular instance, he's saying the lost people spend all of their time seeking after stuff. We're supposed to be better than that. We're supposed to be found. We're supposed to have hope. We're supposed to have faith. We're supposed to believe. We're supposed to know. We're supposed to understand. We're supposed to realize, ladies and gentlemen, that God called you into the heavenly kingdom to make a difference for his greater glory. We're not supposed to be worried. Why? Because he said not to. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. This is the answer to the question that I started with when I, when, when I said, why worry? And then scripture tells us not to worry. So then the next question was, I know it was, somebody here was thinking, okay, that's great, Lord. I see that it says I'm not supposed to worry, but it doesn't tell me what I'm supposed to do. And this is the marvelous thing about Scripture. Scripture gives you the biblical answers to the questions that your heart seeks out. What are you supposed to do instead of worry? You're supposed to seek out the kingdom of God. Amen. You want to know why? Because if you have a task that you focus your mind on, you can't do two things at once. I don't care how handy you are, Brother Tim. You <laughs> You guys got to sit on separate sides of the room. <laughs> It is impossible for you to have two thoughts in your mind at the same time that you are focused on. Yes, a secondary thought can pop into your mind, but if you maintain your focus on the kingdom of God, it pops out just as quickly as it popped in. Amen. It's a choice, ladies and gentlemen, that we make to entertain the thoughts of the devil plants in our way to distract us. Why does he distract us? Because he wants us to worry and God wants us to focus on his kingdom. Therefore, do not worry. I wish it stopped right there. But that's what I want you to, I want you to understand. We started off, do not worry. And we're ending, do not worry. Specifically, it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. You know what that means? Somebody else can worry. We're not supposed to be doing it. Tomorrow will worry about itself. I don't know who tomorrow is, but it's not going to be me. <laughs> And it's not supposed to be any of us. We're supposed to wake up in the morning so blessed with an understanding that God woke us up with a great task of telling somebody else about his great glory. And we get so busy focused on his kingdom that we don't get distracted by the worries of this particular world. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I like that. I do. You know what that tells me? The day's not going to be perfect. I ain't got to worry about it. Today's not going to work out exactly the way I planned it. The worrying is not going to help. Tomorrow is not going to go as smooth as I would like for it to go, but I'm not going to worry about it. Why? Because twice here in Matthew chapter 6, God said, Therefore, do not worry. God said, Therefore, do not worry. I didn't make it up. I didn't pick it out of scripture and, and piece it together in such a way that I could convince you that something is true that's not true. I read to you the word of God. Therefore, do not worry. 
So at this time, Miss Christie's going to come and lead us in the song. Brother Rocky's going to walk his son down here, and we're going to talk about baptism. Mm -hmm. If anybody else would like to come to the altar and pray, you have a few minutes. You actually don't. We're late already. But you can come down to the altar and pray. We're not going to kick you out of the altar. Right here. Okay. All right. The meeting will be over there. 